Today I'm going to use ArcGIS to deploy processed RF propagation data on the web using vector tiles. As we're aware, the data in a coverage map originates from some kind of RF propagation tool. Right now I'm in ArcGIS Pro looking at a collection of individual outputs from one of those tools. We see that the RF data provides a range of values indicating signal strength. So in our example, the white areas represent strong coverage while the darker areas indicate poor coverage. We first use Esri's coverage processing solution to generate a clean and smooth version of the RF data. You'll see that we now have three unique classifications, roaming, good, and excellent coverage. We've also smoothed the polygons that make up each of these classifications to provide a visually appealing representation of our coverage that we now want to share on the web. To do that, ArcGIS Pro provides the ability to share this content as a web layer. On the right, I inputted the information for my layer, specified the layer type as vector tiles, and chose to publish. For sake of time, I published the vector tiles beforehand, but the generation time was only a couple minutes. Now, I'm looking at the item that was generated in my ArcGIS Online portal once I published the vector tile service. I can see here that the tile package created is only 11 megabytes large. Traditionally, raster tiles were used to cache coverage information in the past, which took a server cluster weeks to generate a terabyte sized file. Now with vector tiles, we're using significantly less time and resources to cache the same information. Next, I'm going to open this layer item within an ArcGIS Online web map. You'll notice as I navigate through the map that the vector tiles are dynamically adjusting to the movements I'm making. This ensures that the tiles are optimally displayed regardless of the extent, scale, or orientation I'm viewing the coverage from. Additionally, vector tiles provide the ability to use one coverage data set for the map shared with the public, with partners, and those kept internally. For example, we may have an MVNO partner who wants to have this coverage map on their website, but symbolized according to their branding. To do this, I make a copy of the original vector tile layer, rename it accordingly, and save it as its own layer item that's still referencing the original vector tile service. Next, I'm going to open the JSON style file associated with my new layer. By default, the style is referencing the original symbology applied to the vector tile service, but here I have the opportunity to edit it. In my case, I'm going to apply a red color scheme to the coverage data. Starting with excellent, I'm going to change the color code to assign it a dark red color with good coverage, I'll give it a lighter red. And lastly, with roaming, I'm going to assign it the lightest color. As soon as I apply these changes I made to the code, I can see them reflected on the right. Since these tiles are storing the geometry and attribute information from my original coverage data sets, I can apply additional edits to my style. So now I'm going to apply a filter that only shows the coverage in the market I'm interested in. Once I save the changes I made to the style and refresh my original web map, you'll notice that the new layer is honoring the style that I've been editing while the original vector tile layer remains intact. So to recap, I used ArcGIS Pro to publish processed RF propagation data to ArcGIS Online as a vector tile service. From there, I configured styles to support multiple use cases without having to republish, duplicate, or alter the original tile package.